Good morning. Welcome to the live streaming of morning prayer at Good Shepherd Episcopal Church, Dequesta, Florida, on this Wednesday, the 16th of October, 2024. My name is Letty Anderson, and I'm a member of the Daily Offices team, the ministry that brings you morning prayer every weekday morning live on Zoom at 9 a.m. So good morning to all. Good morning, Ian, Joan, Julie and Pete, and Tracy. Nice to have you with me this morning. Today, we are commemorating three... Um, saints, Hugh Latimer, bishop and martyr, who died October 16th, 1955, and Nicholas Ridley, bishop and martyr, who died the same day because they were both burned at the stake together, and Thomas Cranmer, who was Archbishop of Canterbury and martyr, who died in 1556. There's a lot about the three of these men. I'll try to sum it up so that we don't spend too long. But <clears throat> when Henry VIII of England died, he left three heirs, his son Edward and two daughters, Mary and Elizabeth. Edward succeeded to the throne and was a staunch Protestant, or at least his advisors were. Under his rule, the church services previously in Latin were translated into English and other changes were made. When he died, the throne passed to his sister Mary, who was firmly Roman Catholic. She determined to uh, return England to the Union with the Pope. With more diplomacy, she might have succeeded, but she was headstrong and would take no advice. Her mother, Catherine of Aragon, was Spanish, and she determined to marry the heir to the throne of Spain, not realizing how much her people feared that this would make England a province of the Spanish Empire. So she was headstrong and made a deal to do this, but she insisted the best way to deal with heresy was to burn as many heretics as possible. It says it was worth noting that her husband was opposed to this. In the course of a five-year reign, she lost all the English holdings on the continent of Europe she lost the affection of her people, and she lost any chance of a peaceful religious settlement in England. Of the nearly 300 persons burned by her orders, the most famous are the Oxford martyrs who are commemorated today. Hugh Latimer was a famous preacher. He was Bishop of Worcester at the time of King Henry, but resigned in protest against the king's refusal to allow Protestant reforms that he desired. When Mary came to the throne, he was arrested, tried for heresy, and burned. Nicholas Ridley became an adherent of the Protestant cause while he was a student at Cambridge. He was a friend of Archbishop Cranmer and became private chaplain, first to Cranmer, then to King Henry. Under the reign of Edward, he became Bishop of Rochester and was part of the committee that drew up the English, the first English Book of Common Prayer. So we have him and Thomas Cranmer to thank for that. When Mary came to the throne, he was arrested, tried, and burned with Latimer at Oxford on 16 October, 1555. Thomas Cranmer, our last martyr, was the Archbishop of Canterbury in the days of Henry and defended the position that Henry's marriage to Catherine of Aragon was null and void. When Edward came to the throne, Cranmer was foremost in translating the worship of the church into English. So he and um, Ridley were the two that made the first book of common prayer in the Episcopal slash Anglican church. When Mary came to the throne, Cranmer was in a quandary. He had believed with a fervor that many people today will find hard to understand that it's the duty of every Christian to obey the monarch and that the powers that are to be ordained of God and that the powers are that are to be ordained of God. So he was always bowing to the monarch no matter what. He was, Mary was unwilling to believe that his submission was sincere because he was, he submitted to her. 
and he was ordered to be burned on Ox on, at Oxford on March 21st, 1556. At the very end, he repudi repudiated his final letter of submission and announced that he died a Protestant. So Mary um, didn't really make him into what she wanted. Our morning prayer right to continues with our opening sentences. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Good morning, Pam. Glad you could join us this morning. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. <laughs> Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Let us say together the Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. The psalm appointed for this morning is a portion of Psalm 119. We'll say the psalm in unison. Aleph. Happy are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Happy are they who observe his decrees and seek him with all their hearts, who never do any wrong, but always walk in his ways. You laid down your commandments that we should fully keep them. Oh, that my ways were made so direct that I might keep your statutes. Then I should not be put to shame when I regard all your commandments. I will thank you with an unfeigned heart when I have learned your righteous judgments. I will keep your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. Beth. How shall a young man cleanse his way by keeping to your words? With my whole heart, I seek you. Let me not stray from your commandments. I treasure your promise in my heart that I may not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Instruct me in your statutes. With my lips, I will I recite all the judgments of your mouth. I have taken greater delight in the ways of your decrees than all in all manner of riches. I will meditate on your commandments and give attention to your ways. My delight is in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Gimel. Deal bountifully with your servant that I may live and keep your word. 
Open my eyes that I may see the wonders of your law. I am a stranger here on earth. Do not hide your commandments from me. My soul is consumed at all times with longing for your judgments. You have rebuked the insolent. Cursed are they who stray from your commandments. Turn me from shame and rebuke, for I have kept your decrees. Even though rulers sit and plot against me, I will meditate on your statutes. For your decrees are my delight, and they are my counselors. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first lesson this morning is from the book of Jonah. And this, of course, is about Jonah inside the belly of the fish. But the Lord provided a large fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord to the Lord his God from the belly of the fish, saying, I called to the Lord out of my distress, and he answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol, I cried, and you heard my voice. You cast me into the deep and into the heart of the seas, and the flood surrounded me. All your waves, waves and your billows passed over me. Then I said, I am driven away from your sight. How shall I look again upon your holy temple? The waters closed in over me. The deep shroud surrounded me. Weeds were wrapped around my head at the roots of the mountains. I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever. Yet you brought me up, my, brought up my life from the pit. O oh Lord, my God. As my life was ebbing away, I remembered the Lord. And my prayer came to you into your holy temple. Those who worship vain idols forsake their true loyalty. But I, with the voice of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will pay. Deliverance belongs to the Lord. Then the Lord spoke to the fish, and it spewed Jonah out upon the dry land. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together the third song of Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night, they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night, you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second lesson this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, and this is Luke's story about the loaves and dishes that we are all very familiar with. Then Jesus called the twelve together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases, and he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. He said to them, take nothing for your journey, no staff, no bag, nor bread, nor money, not even an extra tunic. Whatever house you enter, stay there and leave from there. Wherever they do not welcome you, as you are leaving that town, shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. They departed and went through the villages, 
bringing the good news and curing diseases everywhere. Now Herod, the ruler, heard about all that they had that had taken place, and he was perplexed because it was said by some that John had been raised from the dead, by some that Elisha had appeared, and by others that one of the ancient prophets had arisen. Herod said, John, I beheaded, but who is this about whom I hear such things? And he tried to see him. On their return, the apostles told Jesus all they had done. He took them with him and withdrew privately to a city called Bethesda. Then the crowds found him, found out about it. They followed him and he welcomed them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God and healed those who needed to be cured. The day was drawing to a close and the 12 came to him and said, send the crowd away so that they may go to the surrounding villages and countryside to lodge and get provisions, for we are here in a deserted place. But he said to them, you give them something to eat. They said, we have no more than fish, five loaves and two fish, unless we are to go and buy food for all these people. For there were about 5,000 men. And he said to his disciples, make them sit down in groups of about 50 each. So they did and made them all sit down. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke them and gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. And all ate and were filled. What was left over was gathered up, 12 baskets of broken pieces. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together the song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation for the, by the forgiveness of their sins in the tender compassion of our God. The dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Let us say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. 
Amen. Suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The collect appointed for today is the collect for proper 23. Lord, we pray that your grace may always precede and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A collect to commemorate Hugh Latimer, Nicholas Ridley, Thomas Cranmer, Bishops and Martyrs, 1556 and 1555. Keep us, O Lord, constant in faith and zealous in witness, that like your servants, Hugh Latimer, Nicholas Ridley, and Thomas Cranmer, we may live in your fear, die in your favor, and rest in your peace. For the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A Collect for Guidance. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupation of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A Prayer for Protection. Assist us mercifully, O Lord, in these our supplications and prayers, and dispose the way of your servants towards the attainment of everlasting salvation, that among all the changes and chances of this mortal life, they may ever be defended by your gracious and ready help, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ, and particularly those throughout the Anglican Communion remembering today especially the Diocese of Kalima, Congo, the Right Reverend Christoph Kangamina Sadiki, Bishop. We also pray for our Diocese of Southeast Florida and our Bishop, the Right Reverend Peter Eaton, and our Companion Diocese, remembering today especially the Diocese of Haiti, the Right Reverend Jean Sacré Durasson, Bishop. A prayer for mission. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray for our own parish family and those dear to them, remembering today especially Fran, Frank, Tom, Marianne, Stephen, Gail, Isabel, Paul, Linda, and Marilyn. We pray also today for our GROW Ministries, remembering especially Young Families Ministries, that parents, youth, and children may experience love, support, and spiritual growth at Good Shepherd, and Newcomers Ministry, that those exploring or new to Good Shepherd may be welcomed into our community and may know that we have a place for them. A prayer for clergy and people. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom comes every good and perfect gift, send down upon our bishops and other clergy and upon the congregations committed to their charge, the healthful spirit of your grace, that they may truly please you, pour upon them the continual dew of your blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen.
At this time, we invite your prayers of petition, intercession, and thanksgiving, either shared with all or held in the silence of your heart. I would like to ask your prayers for our friend, Bill, who is having um, back surgery on Thursday. He, this is his third back surgery. Um, he has cysts that are not malignant, but one of them now is pressing on his spine, uh, nerves at the base of his spine. So they're gonna go in and remove the cysts. So I'd like to ask your prayers for Bill and Renee as they go through this week and the weeks to come after the surgery. Thank you, Joan. That Joan asked that Ian and I have a safe trip. So we're we're leaving tomorrow to visit his family in Canada for a few days. And Ian asked our prayers for all those affected adversely by Hurricanes Helene and Milton, particularly our neighbors in Southeast Florida, whose homes and property were hit by tornadoes. Yeah, I um I went through Miles Grant, which is where I play golf on Wednesdays, and they had uh, been hit by one of the tornadoes, and there's a lot of damage in that neighborhood. Also, Ian asked our prayers for the peace for peace in areas of the world torn by war or civil strife, especially Haiti, the Holy Land, Ukraine, Sudan, and Congo. And I would also like to ask your prayers for our election, that all may be peaceful and that everyone who wants to vote will be able to vote and that everyone will get out and vote. This is one of our privileges. Ian asked also of prayers for our healthcare and medications to become available for all suffering medical conditions in Haiti, particularly in Bondo. I really can't imagine how awful it would be not to be able to get medications that you need. They're in a lot of, they are suffering a lot in Haiti. A prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you all for joining us this morning. We'll be back here again tomorrow at 9 a.m. So we'll see you then. Everyone have a good rest of your day. It's beautiful here in South Florida today.